Now we can look at the symmetries of the square. So here we have a square molecule, something like a platinum-2 or a nickel-2 compound with four identical substituents 90 degrees apart. So we want to see what the high-order rotation axis is for this particular molecule. So first, let's try to rotate by 90 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. And we see if we do that, that each of the atoms lines up exactly. So this tells us that this particular molecule has a C4 operation. Now if we start from the beginning, now let's see if we can go 90 degrees clockwise. So let's rotate 90 degrees clockwise, and we see that this also lines up. So this particular molecule has a C4 and a C4 to the minus 1 operation as operations of the group. So, now let's see something else. Let's see if we can go 90 degrees followed by 90 degrees. So first we go 90 degrees and it lines up. And then we go another 90 degrees. To make a total of 180 degrees rotation. And we see again, because of the square, that everything lines up perfectly. So this tells us that this molecule has a C4 squared operation. C4 followed by C4. Now we can also think of this as a C2 operation. So C4 squared is equivalent to C2. So if we rotate again by another 180 degrees to make C2 squared, we again get back to where we started from. So we see that we also have C2 operation. Now the C4 has higher priority than a C2 because 4 is a bigger number than 2. And we say that for this particular molecule, that the high order rotation axis is a C4. Now because it's a C4 and it's greater than, it's 3 or greater, this molecule also will exhibit the phenomenon of degeneracy. In degeneracy, we have uh, at least two states that have identical energies. And the fact that we have certain states with identical energies is very, very important in, among other things, identifying molecules by spectroscopy. So we see our high order rotation axis is a C4. This is a group which we call D4H. And we'll get in a second about why we call it D as opposed to C. But it's D4H. The 4 comes from the high order rotation axis, the C4 operation that we have seen previously. The horizontal mirror so, is the plane of the molecule. And it's called a horizontal mirror because it is perpendicular to the high order rotation axis. It is normal, as we say, normal, the high order rotation axis. So here we have the mirror plane, the horizontal mirror plane. Here is the high order rotation axis coming out, and it would be perpendicular, normal, to that plane. So that makes it a horizontal mirror. Now, we also have other mirror planes for this molecule. If we fold along the diagonal, like this. so now we have a mirror plane that's cutting across this way. We see that this side lines up with this side. This is along the symmetry element, so nothing, nothing changed there anyway. So we see that again, if we do the mirror operation, the molecule looks the same as it did before. So we call this particular type of mirror a vertical mirror, because it's not horizontal. Again, if we go along the other diagonal, we can fold along like this, we see that again, everything lines up perfectly, so we have a second vertical mirror for the square. Now, it turns out that we even have a third type of mirror plane. If we fold along a line between the, the atoms, so between the sides, uh, connecting the midpoints of the sides, we have a special type of mirror, which is called a dihedral mirror. The difference between a dihedral mirror and a vertical mirror is merely that the vertical mirrors go through atoms, which is a choice, and if they go between atoms, we call them dihedral mirrors. But vertical mirrors and dihedral mirrors otherwise are very similar. And they are distinct from the horizontal mirror. The horizontal mirror is special because it is normal, perpendicular to the high order rotation axis for the molecule. So we've seen that. Now, there are also other symmetry operations here which we haven't looked at. One very important set is the C2. So we actually have a C2 axis that goes along a line like this. We see if we rotate by half a turn that each of the atoms is in the identical position that it was before. So we can see that again, we'll rotate back. And we see that orange went to orange in every case. 
So we see that we have a C2 operation along here. We also have, we have a number of C2s. So we also have a C2 operation that goes along this way. This way. Then we have two C2s that actually go through the atoms, that go um, essentially along the line that is cut by the, uh, the vertical mirrors. So we have a C2 operation. Like this. It turns out that for this particular molecule, we have four different C2s. And all four of those C2s turn out to be perpendicular to the high order rotation axis. This is the feature that makes it a D group as opposed to a C group. D groups, for whatever the high order rotation axis is, here it's a C4. We have four, if, we, if it's a C4, then there's four C2s that are perpendicular to it. If we have D3H, for example, what makes it a D group is that there is a C3 as the high order rotation axis, and there are three C2s that are perpendicular to it. For identifying point groups, it is not necessary to find all four of the C2s that are perpendicular that make it a D group. Uh, all you have to do is find one. If the one is there, the others that you need will be there also. So this is D4H. That's the highest symmetry of the square. So now we can take a slightly lower symmetry, and we have one where we have two substituents. And see what we got here. Okay, so we have orange and green, two of each, and on opposite sides of the molecule. So let's see what the high order rotation axis is for this particular molecule. So let's try the 90 degrees again. See if we can do a C4. We rotate 90 degrees to the um, uh, counterclockwise direction, and we see that things do not line up. So we do not have C4. If we rotate clockwise, C4 minus 1, again we see that the atoms do not line up. So this molecule no longer has a C4 operation. Let's see if it has a C2. So let's try rotate by 180 degrees, and we see, yes it does. We go by 180 degrees, all the atoms line up, so we really do have a C2. So the high order rotation axis, at least in this direction for this molecule, is going to be C2. A molecule in the real world that might act like this, for this particular pattern, is a compound called transplatin. So platinum would be in the center, the two greens would be chloride ions, and then the two oranges would be amine groups. Uh, cisplatin, where we have the, uh, the substituents on the same sides as each other, the cis position, is a very important breast cancer drug. But transplatin is not useful for cancer or for anything else, except to demonstrate this particular point group symmetry. So let's see what else. So we have C2, higher to rotation axis. Let's look at what mirrors we have. Again, because it's a planar compound, we definitely still have a mirror in the plane of the molecule. That's always there, so we definitely have a mirror there. And it turns out that it's perpendicular to the high order rotation axis, so it is a horizontal mirror. So this is a, a point group which we're going to call D2H. D2H. And let's see what other, we have any other mirrors here. Well, we notice that if we fold along here, we have kind of mirror right through here for the molecule. This atom lines up with this one. These two are along the symmetry element already, so they go in and turn into themselves. So we really do, we have a mirror there. It's called a vertical mirror. And then along the other diagonal, we also have another vertical mirror. So this molecule has two vertical mirrors. It has a horizontal mirror. It has a C2 that rotates this way, the high order rotation axis. And then we also have two more C2s. We have a C2 that goes along this way, so we're going to rotate, and it turns into itself. And along this diagonal, we also have another C2. Now, because these C2s are perpendicular to the high order rotation axis, that tells us that we have a D group. So this tells us that we have the group D2H.